Hey, Chris Ferdinandi, the vanilla JavaScript guy from GoMakeThings.com. Today, we're going to look at how to create auto-expanding text areas. So let's dig in. This trick comes courtesy of um, my friend Stephen Shaw, who kind of was playing around with some technique, and Chris Coyer picked up on it and expanded on it a little bit. And I want to walk through my own kind of implementation of this that I've used on a couple of projects uh, today. So let's jump over to the text editor for a second and we can take a look at this. Uh, so here I have a label, I have my text area. The first thing that you want to do is wrap your text area in a div and give it some sort of hook or class. Um, so in this case, I've given it the auto, go, auto grow class, but you can name it uh, whatever you want. Then you use CSS grid to link the sizing of that parent div and its child text area together. And they'll both have the height of whichever one is the biggest. So if we scroll up for just a second, uh, here I've got my auto grow class uh, set to display grid. Um, and um, I am uh, assigning the text area a resize of none. I'm giving uh, both the text area and uh, after a grid area of one, one, two, two. Uh, and any text area styles that you want, you would put them in the same spot so that both the parent and the text area look the same. Whenever the user types, you want to add that text to the um, data replicated value data attribute on the parent div. You could use an external event listener for this, but a simple on input event works just as well. So if we scroll down, I've got on input, this parent node set attribute, data replicated value, this value. So anytime the text in this text area changes, this parent is going to get an updated data replicate value with the text content as its content as well. Um, Finally, you use the CSS content property and the attribute function to display a copy of the text area content after the div, but you visually hide it with visibility hidden. So if we jump up for a second, I've got auto grow with the after pseudo selector. I'm setting my content to the um, value of that data replicated value attribute. I'm giving the white space a pre-wrap and visibility of hidden. Uh, the white space pre-wrap property is needed to ensure it wraps properly. Um, otherwise, you can run into some issues there. Uh, and we also want to prevent users from resizing the text area because that will break the link between the two of these here. Um, one little quirk I found, and actually before we jump into that, let's actually see this in action. So we've got we've got the CSS here. We've got this little little line of code here. Uh, so if we jump over to a demo where I've got this working, uh, we can you know type some text. We'll add some line breaks, and every every time I hit enter, you can see this is just automatically expanding. And if I were to delete it out, it automatically resizes back down. The one kind of hiccup here is that if your text area has text in it when the page loads, this stops working. The fix is um, a function with just five lines of JavaScript that will assign a default data replicated value for each auto grow field. So if we jump over, um, I've got this function here. I'm using query selector all to grab every element with the auto grow class. And then I'm looping through. If the field has no value, we skip it. Otherwise, we set the data replicated value to the field value. One other option that we could do instead of doing this here uh, is we could actually just copy and paste this one line here uh, and do it on load instead, which is what I'm doing here. This parent node set attribute data replicated value equals this value. So it's really up to you whether you want to do it um, as an on load attribute or an external function. I'm going to drop all of the source code for this video uh, down in the description below. If you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and maybe even share it with someone else who you think might enjoy it. 
You can also get my daily developer tips newsletter over at gomakethings.com, where every weekday I share a new tip, trick, tool, or vanilla JS snippet to help you build a simpler and more resilient web. Thanks so much for watching.